Good evening, I am Richard S. McGee, and you're watching The Learning Tree. I have as my guest this evening, William O'Donnell, who is the Register of Deeds for Norfolk County. Tell me, you like to call Bill? Call me Bill Richard. Call him Bill, happen. okay. <laughs> I've been called worse. <laughs> You've been called a lot of things, I'm sure. <laughs> First, let's talk, to you, talk about you. Give me a little background history on you. Well, sure. I um, grew up in Norwood, Massachusetts, uh, mm -hmm. down the street. Um, I went to Zavan Brothers High School over at Westwood. Uh, was lucky enough to go to school down Georgetown University and came home to Boston College Law School. So I, I studied and uh, uh, I, live in, I still live in Norwood and uh, with my w uh, wife and three children. Um, been like, active like, in Norwood with sports and things. Actually, we coached against uh, George Campbell uh, years back at Wellesley High School. When is I that right? The Norwood girls high hockey team. Is that right? Back, uh, you're, back like Warren, like, you're like Warren Buffett. You live in the original house? <laughs> <laughs> not quite, not quite. <laughs> Was Dr. Reverend Robert Drowning still at the law school at BC when you were there? Uh, uh, no, he wasn't. Uh, no, uh, no, he, he had he gone to Congress by then. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Uh, so how how was it, BC, in those uh, days? Uh, uh, BC it w was great. Law school was great. You got some great experience, mm. and uh, you know, um, and, and and great exposure too uh, to, to different things. And mm -hmm. so that's what I've tried to draw on my experiences. When I was down in Washington, I, I worked for Congressman Moakley. Mm -hmm. uh, when I was in law school, um, I had a, a class that, that got us out into the courtroom uh, doing prosecutions, and I, I ended up working for uh, uh, Bill Delahunt in the district attorney's office. So, Delahunt, I've heard that name in yeah, a long time. Yeah, a yeah. long time. So, um, you know, so that, that you know, that's been some of my experience. Uh, you know, I believe in public service, so I worked as an assistant district and attorney. Tra track me through your public service. Well, I worked as an uh, assistant district attorney. Um, but much like probably a lot of people watching your show, I got involved locally. Uh, when I got out of law school, I ran for the planning board in Norwood and got elected town meeting member. We have much like Wellesley, a representative town meeting. Um, uh, and and uh, so... Uh, let, me, let me get this out of your way. Oh. <laughs> uh, okay. Go ahead. And, uh, oh, you can have it. Yeah, yeah so we, we uh, have been involved there and... Uh, I've been registered deeds uh, since 2002. It's uh, it's an armor government many people don't know about, uh, but it's an armor government when you think about deals with the biggest asset most of us have, which is our home. How did you come into that job? Well, um, I, you know, I you mean, I, an attorney does that that a good I think work being for an attorney. Uh, sometimes being an attorney in society is a bad thing. I, I mean, I enjoy being a lawyer. I, 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 I as I said, I was in the in the public service as an assistant district attorney, but mm -hmm. I've also been in the private sector, uh, you know, and uh, so I think the, the, having a law degree allows you to do a lot of different things, and, uh, and uh, this is one of them. Uh, I, think, I think it's an advantage to, have a, to be a lawyer at the Registry of Deeds. Not, there's 21 uh, registries of deeds across the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. How many? 21. <laughs> and okay. Norfolk County is one of the, the bigger ones. Uh, mm -hmm. There's 28 communities that make up Norfolk County, Wellesley being one of them, and I think it does help to have an attorney uh, running it. I, 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 you know, I had a broad rate, range of experience as an attorney, whether it was litigation or real estate, and I, I've tried to uh, use some of the things I've learned uh, in government. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, uh, when I worked for Congressman Moakley down in Washington, or or he t you know locally town meeting member as a town meeting member, you see what government does well. Sometimes you see what government can improve upon, and I think also. Uh, being in the private sector, I've tried to take that type of thinking with some of the things we've done with our modernization uh, at the Registry of Deeds. Mm -hmm. Do you have a family? Uh, yes, I, I have uh, three children. Uh, my oldest uh, is 26. Um, he went to Stonehill College and uh, he's working. I have a daughter that uh, uh, just graduated Boston College last uh, oh, May. Okay. And she's working okay. and I have a son uh, that's a junior uh, at, at Boston College, and, uh, and uh, hopefully he'll be working. BC happens to be a choice of the family. Uh, well, you know, they were very uh, <laughs> fortunate and lucky to get to, to get in. Uh, yeah. I, I don't know if I, I could get into the schools that I went to. Uh, it's very hard to get into these schools. You now. think it's hard these days? I think it is. I yes. think it's hard. That's a discussion I'm going to have to have with the Ed Department someday, what's happening in higher education and uh, uh, these days. But anyway, back to you. Uh, 
what is the registry of deeds? Not what is the person who, who, who commands it, but what is this agency? Well, it's, a, it's an agency, and, I, and, and in Norfolk County, this agency started in 1793. Norfolk County's been mm. in existence since 1793. So what it is, it's an agency that uh, takes the community land records and records them in a safe and secure and accurate manner. And it makes those records available uh, to the community and, and to the communities that make up Norfolk County. And I think the mission was the same uh, in 1793 as it is now. It's just the services get delivered in a little different way, where it's mm -hmm. a little bit more modern. But it's an arm of government many people don't know about, but I'm sure your town requires their conservation commission orders to be recorded or their board of appeals decisions to be recorded. When you buy a house, a deed has to get recorded that tells everyone that you own that house. If you borrow money, the lenders want to make sure they get repaid and they have the mortgages recorded. So uh, the registry of deeds is where all these community land records get recorded. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and, and, and again, it, it involves an area of the economy that's very important, not just here in Wellesley or here regionally, here nationally. If you can't rely on records, mm -hmm. a very big part of the economy, the real estate economy, would, would not be what it is now. So. That's a little bit about, it's really a, a you know, a, it's where all the land records get recorded. Are there two kinds of uh, deeds? Well, th there are two types of land. Two types uh, of land, uh, right. and, and most people don't realize it because the deeds look the same. But in Massachusetts, you have the recorded land side, uh, and you also have the land court or registered land side. The registered land uh, was authorized by the state legislature back in 1900. Mm -hmm. And so someone took the time to make sure that they got lawyers involved, they got engineers involved, they got title examiners involved to get the land registered in with the land court. Mm -hmm. And so in Norfolk County, 80% of the land is recorded land mm -hmm. and 20% of the land is registered land or land court. But for, for the consumer, well, what, I mean, what, the it, lawyers know the difference, but for the consumers, it, it's, you know, they really wouldn't know that. It's kind of, it's kind of inside baseball, I guess, mm -hmm. seeing yeah. that the World Series well, is Tell me a little bit about that second part. The, the land court, well, there I are some. I understand the, 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 the first part of that, the 80% part, yeah. but that second part, tell me well, about that. Well, what I think happened is, um, someone took the time to register the land because there was probably some title issues they had to straighten out. Okay. And there are some protections. Theoretically, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts backs up that land against any title issues or, or, or any problems like that. And there are, there are things written into the statute that protect people. For instance, if I put a fence up over your land and I did it for 21 years, I could take your land by adverse possession. <laughs> However, if you have registered a it's land court years land, now, yeah, right? yeah, you can't do that. <laughs> yeah, so there are some things in the statute if it's registered land that are, uh, it's a little bit more protected. Has that ever happened? Adverse possession? Oh, there's adverse possession cases, I'm sure. You're um, kidding. But <laughs> as far as, um, you know, at the registry, it's really, uh, I call it an accident of history. Someone took the time to register the land, mm -hmm. and it's, it's as simple as this. When you come to our, our beautiful building at 649 High Street, mm -hmm. you go to the right for recorded land, you go to the left for registered or land court land. Okay. <laughs> All right. Uh, interesting stuff here. I uh, thought we'd try to deal with some of it. Uh, this is a... Uh, uh, what to get my right page here? See, I, I I know that your secretary expected I would remember all this. <laughs> uh, talk about about uh, the uh, electronic recording system that you have. Is sure. That, is that, was I just what to what discussion? Yeah. Um, well, it's just it's it's just another uh, one of the modernization initiatives that have taken place at the registry. Uh -huh. The big modernization initiative, and the thing probably uh, I'm most proud of, is we have internet land record research. So if your viewers go to www.norfolkdeeds.org, they can actually look up this information. Um, and if they go on our website, we have information uh, for first-time home buyers, for people that are struggling with foreclosure. 
Um, so what we've tried to do is use these advances in technology to make the registry more relevant mm -hmm. and, and try to get the registry records into people's homes and businesses. Oh, you so, want people to be able to use the system? Well, the, uh, people can. And I as like a, you. We like, I could use the system. You could, and, uh, yeah. and if you go on our website, we open the building up uh, a, a couple of times a year where we teach people, uh, so we, and it's not just for lawyers or title examiners, mm -hmm. uh, real estate brokers come in, regular citizens come in, we just had a program for government officials, mm -hmm. people that work in the town halls uh, or who have been elected to some of these volunteer boards uh, like the Conservation Commission or the Board of Appeals, that they can learn how to use the system to look up information. And so we're very proud of that because when I got there, uh, there, there was no uh, internet land record research. Uh -huh. So that's just something that, that we've implemented. Since and it allows people- Since 2002. Since 2002. Yeah, and I guess, well, I, I, there were computers around then, but I guess uh, not as sophisticated. No, no, it's no. just, it, well, there were computers around, but the idea of yeah. taking, there's over uh, six million uh, documents at the registry to get all that information <laughs> um, uh, cut over, mm -hmm. um, and it needed to be done not just to make the records. Is uh, that all electronically re recorded? Uh, well, electronic well, recording is, a, is yeah, another. You still got a lot of paper. Well, you know, um, when I took over the th uh, the operation in 2002, yeah, there was yeah. a I called it a paralysis of paper. There yeah. was literally a year's worth of mail with yeah. documents that needed to be recorded sitting mm -hmm. there. Now, with the new technology, when you come in. Yes, it's paper, but it's processed instantaneously. You get a, a receipt when you pay your money. You get a booking page. Um, and you, you, all that information is scanned in. So now uh, our records go back to 1793. That's when Norfolk County was established. If you went to book one, page one, that first document from 1793 mm -hmm. can be viewed by, by the public, by your citizens at what home. What happened to the paper? Well, you still keep the paper. I'll tell you what, um, <laughs> not all of it. We are in, it, it's all, I, I, I love history. Uh, okay. and, and that's not, a, I'm not trying to uh, duck the question because we're still one of the few registries in Massachusetts that print books. A lot of my fellow registers have taken pride in stopping printing books. I'm the opposite. I still print the books. You print the book. Okay. Uh, but everything is on I the often computer. often print, book print. Yeah. So, uh, so what we do is this, and it, it's kind of a, a, some people like doing it the old fashioned way too, you know, okay. uh, you know, um, I was mentioning to you, my, my, my dad's 87, yeah. and uh, when w I was telling him we're, all the stuff we're doing, a modernization and bringing the computers, he says, hey, remember, some of us don't know anything about computers, don't want to know anything about computers. So we still have a customer service center that people can call uh, and get help. But that's another reason I do the books. Some people prefer to do the books and, and not the computer. How often do you do the book? Mm -hmm. How often do you? Do oh, we print them. Uh, we print them. Uh, do you just update it? Just, just no, just as they come in. When I first started, uh, it was at book 17,000. We're approach, approaching book 36,000. So all these mm. documents that come in, yeah. we scan them in. Um, so y y all those documents are backed up. We've, again, trying to apply some private sector thinking. Mm. We back up the records. We have a disaster recovery plan so that the records don't get lost. Mm. And when you think about it, what happened in Louis you know, down in New Orleans with the floods? Uh, you know, wonder if that happened here. So one of the reasons we back things up is we can recreate all these uh, records. Mm. Uh, so I look at it as far as disaster recovery, one way of making sure the records are preserved, we print the books, and we still print the books. We also, by law, have to microfilm. So we microfilm every document that's been recorded at the registry. We have microfilm, so you do, you and that gets stored off-site. Yeah, you do two things then, uh, well, preservation. The, yeah, and then the third thing, as far as disaster recovery, is every, uh, weekly and daily, we back up all that. The tape drives all get backed up, and they get sent to a renovated nuclear bunker uh, owned by Iron Mountain down in Rhode Island. Mm. Again, stored off site. Mm -hmm. And w what we've done, if something physically happens to the building, it's at 649 uh, uh, High Street in Dedham, mm -hmm. right across from Norfolk Superior Court, the Gold Dome building in, in, in mm -hmm. downtown Dedham. Mm -hmm. uh, we have a little building down the street where we put uh, like a mini office in so that, you know, if something happens to the building at 649 High Street, we can open the door and at least record, you mm -hmm. know. Um, 
you know, because, you know, if you were selling your house or buying a house, you know, you want to make sure you're, you're, you're able to do it. So th those are kind of the steps we've taken for disaster recovery and business continuity planning. And, and it's all kind of a function of the advances in technology. I mean, uh, one of the reasons we're, we're doing the things on the Internet is because, uh, you know, uh, of taking adv advantage of the technology. And you mentioned electronic recording. That wasn't even around till a few years ago. Electronic recording mm. is a lawyer here in Wellesley could do the closing in his office. They go online, make sure there's no liens, and they transmit those documents over the internet, and we record. Mm. So we, we have implemented that, and um, just within the um, uh, last January, the legislature passed a law that allowed us to do it on the land court side. We were mentioned in the land court. Uh, okay. uh, we were always doing it on the 80% side, the recorded land side. Yeah. Um, so we just started uh, last uh, spring recording on the land court or that 20% side. Mm -hmm. So electronic recording, um, we have 28 communities from Bellingham to Wellesley down to Brookline and Cohasset. Mm -hmm. So these, uh, the, the, the uh, the people that use the registry like it because they can do the work in their office and send the documents in. Mm. Tell me about the Homestead Act. Well, the Homestead Act is a pretty big, you know, consumer issue, and it, it's it's great you ask that question because, you know, I'm an attorney by training, and sometimes you talk to ten different attorneys, you might get ten different opinions on something. But I would say <laughs> nine point nine out of ten would say you should have a homestead, and the homestead, at least in Massachusetts. The, the state legislature has written the Homestead Act, which allows somebody to declare an estate a homestead on their principal residence, and only on their principal residence. And what it does, it sort of puts a picket fence around your home so they can't force the sale of your home. Now, yeah. that means if you don't pay the, the town of Wellesley, they can, they can take your property by tax title. If you don't pay a bank, they can foreclose on you. Is there a time limit in that? Well, no, no uh, a homestead is good as long as you own your principal residence. Mm -hmm. Now, if you had your house in Wellesley and decided to sell it and downsize to a condominium in Wellesley, mm -hmm. you'd have to put a new uh, homestead on. The homestead is only as good as, you, as long as you own that particular piece of property. Mm -hmm. Uh, when I first started, the homestead protection was 300000 and it's been increased to 500000 Wait a minute, protection. Talk about that. What, what do you mean, protection? Well, in, in the statute, the legislators, yeah. and you've got to thank uh, uh, your local legislators, you know, it was written that this 300000 is the protection under the homestead. What's that mean? Well, it, it means, uh, it means uh, that theoretically, the, it, now it's up to 500000 I say for all intents and purposes, what I see down at court is, I mean, I know Wellesley has some affluent homes. Mm -hmm. The intent of the legislature is to say that the home is off limits as far as forcing the sale of a home. So from a practical standpoint, I think the judges down at court are like, look at, you know, your house might be worth more than the 500000 We're not going to be, you know, just because you have value in your house doesn't mean we're going to sell it. The intent is to keep people in their homes. Oh. Now, the creditors are still going to chase you and try to do things to get collected. Right. But someone might say, well, wh wh what's an example of why I might need a homestead? I always tell people, well, we all you know, drive cars. And sometimes people might think they have a lot of insurance. Maybe they have $100,000 worth of insurance mm -hmm. on their car. But they hit someone in a crosswalk, and, and there's a $400,000 case there. Well, your insurance company is probably just going to pay that hundred thousand over, and they're going to start looking to your assets for the other, you know, three hundred thousand. Mm -hmm. So, uh, I think the homestead's a, a good consumer uh, uh, protection. Um, no substitute for having good insurance, um, but but sometimes you get yourself in trouble, and at least the homestead would protect the biggest asset most people have uh, their homes, mm -hmm. and and. Uh, and it also gives you, it affords protections in other ways. If you have a homestead recorded and you sell your house, mm -hmm. those proceeds are protected, mm -hmm. again, for a limited period of time. But under the homestead, a creditor can't swoop in and, and, and go after the proceeds uh, mm -hmm. for a limited period of time one year. Or just say your house burnt down and the mm -hmm. insurance company gave you a check to rebuild. If you have a homestead recorded, your creditors can't swoop in and try to collect on that casualty insurance check. Mm. So to give you, again, that is two years under the statute. So it gives you a chance to try to 
build your house back up. And people who buy homes know this kind of stuff? Well, I think, I think it shows and like this real is estate great. Dealers. I think there's more education, Richard. Um, I know when I was an attorney, when you mentioned homesteads, I think they'd always look kind of like, oh, the lawyer's just trying to sell me something. Yeah. But I think there's more, um, I know there's been more outreach, you know, say, you know, I've been, the Registry of Deeds is a sleepy arm of government, but one of the things we try to do mm -hmm. is do outreach, outreach on why you should check your mortgages, uh, why you should have a homestead recorded. So I think it's a combination of more outreach. I think people are a little more sophisticated, and I think people check the internet more, uh, and there's more education about the issue. Yeah, and I think the, the real estate- It's initiative, though, not part of the fabric of the, uh, of the real estate market. Well, it's more so now, because one of the new statutes, the lawyers have to uh, you know, mention it at the closing. I mean. I would, when I was they back do? in private practice, I would mention it at the closing, but a lot mm -hmm. of times people would just dismiss it as, oh, the attorney's just trying to have me record something, you know? What, is there a cost to it? The, uh, it's one of the, uh, again, the filing fees that are set by the state legislature, mm -hmm. uh, we collect the monies at the registry, it's relatively modest compared to some of the other fees, mm -hmm. and it's a $36 filing fee. So it's a relatively uh, modest filing fee of $36, 36 to have this filing recorded. Fees, a one, one time fee. Yes, and with respect to the homestead, if you need to download a form, uh, if you go to our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, you can download a form. And the only reason I mention that, uh, and you should you know, go to an attorney if you want to talk to yeah. it, but there are some groups out there um, uh, that, 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 for instance, there's a group out there, they target the elderly with this letter. They, they get you a free homestead. They get you a homestead form for $15. They don't pay, they don't fill out the homestead form for you or record it. Mm -hmm. they, you just give them $15 for a form that you can get free. So um, <laughs> there's all kinds of these scams out there. Um, uh, there's a deed scam where mm -hmm. uh, this group, one group, used to send a letter out saying you need to get a certified copy of your deed and they would do it for $60 and they would come to the registry and pay $2 to get that $60 uh, <laughs> certified copy. So if you need a certified copy of your deed, you can come to the registry of deeds directly or you know, a lot of times we're at office hours. Um, mm -hmm. We were just recently in Wellesley at the town hall. We have office hours. We certify it there as a courtesy uh, for so free. So where are office hours in, in town hall? They, yeah, we, we go to all 28 community. You know, we, 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 we try to have an outreach, and, and some of it's probably my background, you know, working for Joe Moakley. Uh, okay. and, you know, he always said you got to take care of the residents and the constituents. And so what we do is, uh, yeah, Wellesley, you have a beautiful town hall. They're very gracious. They let us uh, set up in the selectman's office, and we bring our computers because people can come in. They might not know if they have a homestead recorded. Uh, people can come in and, and when check you said, their When you set this office up, what is the purpose for setting the office up? And, and who, uh, who, who, who's informed and who comes well, to Well, uh, we just have the, the, a lot of the resident, residents come by. Uh, what, how, how do, we they, do how it, they know you're there? If they, could they could check our website and know mm -hmm. we're there. And the towns are great. Wellesley's great about putting it out on their website. Mm -hmm. And, and, uh, and um, you know, sometimes the paper puts it in, you know, uh, to come by. So uh, the beauty of this technology mm -hmm. is that we bring our computers so that the, when I first started, it was the old fashioned way. I'd have to take the notes and run back to the registry and then call them back and they needed something else, the back and forth. Mm -hmm. Here you have the computers and we get it all done. Um, you know, s some people pay off their mortgages, but the document that tells the world that that mortgage has been paid off, a mortgage discharge, mm -hmm. hasn't been recorded. Sometimes it hasn't been recorded because the, mostly the bigger banks didn't send the mortgage discharge in. Sometimes they, the, they, the banks never made clear to the people that that document that they sent had to be taken to the registry to get recorded. <laughs> so you want to make sure that the uh, mortgage uh, discharge is recorded. So you know when you pay off your loans, that's great but you want to make sure that there's a document that tells the world that it's been paid off. And you got to remember, a lot of banks went out of business or merged. And if you go to our website- yeah, The housing market killed a lot of the banks. Yeah, yeah. Well, in, in, um, when the banks uh, went, w went bankrupt, that's a big title issue. Yeah. But some of the banks that merged, we have a, a document, uh, where has my bank gone? And if you go onto our website, we uh, have uh, federal and state contact information where you can contact 
uh, th these uh, government groups that will tell you what bank became what. Mm -hmm. And we also have links to the Attorney General's office uh, okay. you know, for some help there too. Mm -hmm. um, because it's not an insurmountable problem, Richard, if you have to get your mortgage discharge, but you do have to track it down. And I'm a big believer in community banking. I think some of the larger banks, people forget when the, you know, we had troubles in 2008, 2009. I think some of these larger banks mm -hmm. don't always follow the recording rules. I'm a, a big believer in the community banks. You go to down to a, your local community bank, you know, hey, I need a mortgage discharge. They can look it up. The vice president's probably in the next room. They mm -hmm. can get the discharge for you and, and you're on your way. But some of the bigger banks, we find that the consumers have to chase it a little. And um, it, it is an issue and it's just, you know, again, another consumer issue, much like the homestead, mm -hmm. that when we have these town hall office hours, people come by and want to look this, this information up or just get a mm -hmm. copy of their deed. And you can do it right there and then. Yeah, we do it right there. That's the beauty of the computers. and. Uh, um, uh, well, you just, you just talked about that mortgage discharge. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, the, yeah. It, it, it's, it's something, you know, you'd rather check on those things when you're not under the gun to sell, you know. No. Uh, you don't want that call the three people, days before. Do people know this kind of stuff? Well, we try to we try to do it in, in, in outreach, whether it's mm -hmm. you know uh, talking about it. When we have those computer seminars, we mention it to people, and by the end of the day, at the end of the night, uh, you know they, they're looking up their own mortgages. But uh, yeah. if not, they can call our customer service department. I mentioned that we, my, my 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 dad said that how people aren't very interested in computers. The other thing mm -hmm. that came out of that is we we created a customer service department. So if you call that number. One seven eight one four six one six one zero one. The people can that we answer can the phone can look the information up, yeah. or come by the come by our office hours and we'll look that up for you. All right. Uh, how about this uh, consumer notification service and uh, what is it? Fraud property? Yeah. So uh, again, it's just trying to be proactive. Maybe some of it was my ex experience working in the district attorney's office. Mm -hmm. uh, private sector, hey, sometimes people don't always do the right thing. And the FBI says one of the fastest growing white collar crime nationally uh, pertain, you know, deals with uh, property fraud and mortgage fraud. Mm -hmm. Now, what we've done at the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds is to have a consumer notification service. It's, a, it's an anti-fraud program. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I've, I've signed up myself. Mm -hmm. You sign up, uh, you can do it online, and you get notified, and my name's Bill O'Donnell, any time a Bill O'Donnell document comes through, mm -hmm. it might be William J. O'Donnell, I'm William P. O'Donnell, mm -hmm. you get notified. Now some people might think that's inconvenient, but I get notified, I look it up, it's, you know, great, it has nothing to do now with how me. The no how does the notification come, by, by mail? Uh, no, email. You sign up by email, uh, okay. again, so it's instantaneous. You get this email. Most people don't have email. What, what happens to the people that don't have well, email? Well, that, that, now, yeah. We, that, we're assuming that everybody yeah, has email. Yeah, you know, you're right. Well, uh, you know, that's, that, you know, <laughs> I'll have to think on that one. <laughs> but the, w how this system works, yeah. uh, you know, again, try to, try to, uh, right. uh, try to be, get rid of the paper that you talked about earlier, yeah. is you sign up, you get notified. And there's going to be a time, hopefully it won't happen, when I'm going to look up that document and say, wait a minute, that's my deed. Mm -hmm. I didn't sign that. Or that's a mortgage to my mm -hmm. house. I didn't sign that. Now, I haven't seen that type of fraud in Norfolk County, but you hear about it in other parts of the country. So mm -hmm. I always feel it's only a matter of time before it gets this way. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't prevent the fraud. But you can see, if you sign this up and you get an email and you check, it's like, okay, that's not me. But the one time it is you, we do have links to the law enforcement um, agencies here in Norfolk mm -hmm. County. It doesn't prevent the fraud, but it can get you to get on it right away, like, you know, so that you do know about it mm -hmm. and, and say, hey, wait a minute, you know, that's not, that's my house, but I didn't sign that. Mm -hmm. And that's not, you know, I didn't sign that deed or I didn't sign that mortgage. So... That's just something we were the first registry here in Massachusetts to implement it, and um, it, it seems to be working. People sign up, and, and to me, so you are getting people who do come to you for that service. Oh yeah, yeah, it's, yeah, yeah. We have about seven hundred people have signed up, yeah. and uh, 
you know, um, I think it's just a matter of getting the word out and more people will sign up. And, and uh, is, that, again, is that a big number, 700? Well, it's a start. I mean, when you see how there's 28 communities in North Fork County, it's a mm -hmm. it, it's a start. And I, and and uh, you know, well, sometimes you we have? sometimes we don't do things until something happens to us, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and sometimes that's too late. So yeah. it, I leave it up to people, uh, which, which you know, if more people sign up. But I think it is a good service in this sense. What would you like to see it? The number? I boy, I don't know. You know, I, as as many as as we can. Um, Are you but good to handle larger numbers? Yeah, because it's all into it's, all, it's all the well. You know, uh, one thing I know, I, I try to have a good staff, and my IT, my uh, IT staff is saying we they can handle it. So okay. how uh, many people are work, working in your office? In, in I uh, well, we have um, like forty people uh, working at at the registry. Okay. okay. Yeah. And They're all in one place. Denim. Yeah. We. we you what don't we have did, satellites. No. You know, some other uh, registries did that. Um, I did a survey. I sent a survey out, mm -hmm. and it's this is back as I said when it was all paper driven. We had just started putting the computers in and mm -hmm. putting the internet in, and I sent the survey out. Would people rather have satellite offices? And the, what we got back was people would rather have had the the resources devoted to the internet. Um, and and I think some people could see that if you set up satellites. It can be expensive. First of all, you know, no. if I was going to do a satellite, it has to be like free rent, and a lot of like you go to a town hall or something. But a lot of town halls are short on space. Yeah. Uh, so uh, what I did was put the resources into the internet, mm -hmm. and that's why we're back to 1793. Every document is available. Uh, our indexes. So if, if you r ran my name, Bill O'Donnell, when we first started, it was Bill O'Donnell back to 1990s, and then it was 1970. Uh, our current index is back to 1900, and, and you might say, well, wait a minute, I thought you said the registry goes from 1793. We're, by the end of this year, we will have that index back to 1793. Okay. All right. But to give you a sense of the scope, from 1793 to 1900, that's only 861 books. I mentioned to you we're, we're approaching book 36,000, so mm. we have over 35,000 books completely indexed. Mm. Um, and we have the old indexes from 1793 online, but you have to look up the names. Mm -hmm. When this project is done, if you run, um, um, say, John Adams, one of the presidents uh -huh. uh, here uh, from yeah. the United States. Yeah. We have, we've had four presidents born in North Fork County. If you ran, you, you will be able to run his name, and it will take all the John Adamses back to 1793. Uh, so so um, that's what I've done was try to take the resources. We don't have satellite offices, but I think I think it was the right move um, because I think people uh, recognize that they, they, they'd rather work on the on the computer. Mm. I still believe in the old fashioned mm. way. You know, that's why um, we do outreach. We go not only to the town halls, mm -hmm. as we mentioned, Richard, before, but I. I've taken that computer to the veterans organizations. I've taken it to Lions Clubs. I've taken it to Rotaries. I've taken it to the senior centers where, mm -hmm. you know, they ask you to talk about the registry and then, you know, we have the computers there. So uh, we, we still believe in the old fashioned kind of outreach and that's the other reason we have that customer service department. Because mm -hmm. uh, <laughs> as I said, my, you know, uh, I remember what my dad said, some people just want to come in and, and have it done for them and they yeah, can't. Come in and have a drink and a cigar. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was, you, you'll be getting me in trouble. <laughs> uh, let's see, this is a, uh, sometimes I can't see the stuff because uh, I don't have my glasses on. But uh, this project, this, this trans uh, what's that? Trans oh, transcription project, transcription sure. Project, um, yeah. Well, he, here's what happened there. I mentioned um, we have documents back to 1793. Yeah. From 1793 to 1900, all those documents were handwritten. Uh -huh. So uh, the register in 1900 would probably talked about his modernization initiative, the typewriter. Uh -huh. The typewriter came in in 1900. So what we've done is all those handwritten documents, those are the legal documents, they're online, you can look them up. Okay. The transcription project started because sometimes uh, it's hard to read those documents, uh -huh. whether you get your glasses on or not. Very hard to read those <laughs> documents because they're handwritten. Yeah. And, uh, um, history comes alive. Well, 
you know, history is coming alive. Actually, history can't come alive if you can't read the documents. So <laughs> we got, as I said, four presidents born in Norfolk County. Uh, John Hancock uh, yeah. was born over in uh, over in Quincy. There's there's a lot of history, uh, a lot of history in Norfolk County. Mm -hmm. But really, the people that uh, Again, the lawyers, the title examiners, the transcription project, they really like the trans transcription project because mm. we've transcribed the handwritten document. So it approached over 450,000 documents. I just started out with deeds, mm -hmm. which, you know, because um, I figured, you know, that's what people are very interested in. But we've expanded it and uh, we've finished that project. So mm -hmm. all the handwritten documents, when you view them online, if you hit a, 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 the next button, the t type version comes on. The lawyers and the people that are involved in real estate, the title examiners, engineers, they like it because, it, it, you know, that's really what the mission is. It's about real estate. Mm -hmm. But we're finding uh, a lot of uh, people are using the registry now for historical and genealogical research. Oh, interesting. And they really uh, kind of like it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, because there's a lot of uh, interesting information in some of the deeds and a lot of history. And another reason I did it, I, 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 I mentioned I had three children. My, my youngest now is a junior in college, but I noticed when he graduated high school a few years ago, and I had started the project before then because I was more concerned about the real estate part of it. Right. I did notice a lot of the young kids don't seem to know cursive. And you got to remember, the documents from 1793 to 1900 are all handwritten Scrib out. Scrib now, yeah. Scrib yeah, so Scrib hope, yeah. hopefully they'll, you know, people will know cursive, but I started thinking a couple of generations from now, <laughs> you know, you, 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 they might not know it. So at least we'll have a typed version, but, uh, um, you know, so that was... Can you still, can you still read those? Um, they're ha they're harder very, to read. Oh, you have to get the, you very, have to really look at them. Very difficult. And the yeah. beauty of the computer, though, is you know, we have the books, yeah. and you can go to the books, but yeah. the computer, you can zoom in and zoom out and kind of really enlarge the words and yeah. things. But you're, it is difficult, and that's one of the reasons we did this transcription project is uh, there's a lot of great history here in <laughs> Norfolk County, and uh, a lot of interesting people li have lived in Norfolk County. Yeah, I but uh, I, I always, well, uh, that's the trivia. I'm not, I don't tell good jokes or anything, but four presidents were born in Norfolk County. There was uh, John who, John who, Adams. Who are they all? Yeah, John Adams, John Quincy Adams, yeah. uh, uh, John Fitzgerald Kennedy over in Brookline, yeah. and George uh, Herbert Walker Bush was born in Milton. Oh, so four, right. four presidents in Norfolk County. Uh, tell me about the assignment bill of legislation. Yes, uh, the assignment bill, we, we do... Um, uh, from time to time, have to you know go up to Beacon Hill to try to you know things come up in real estate. Uh, as, as a matter of fact, that Homestead bill. Um, How old is the Homestead bill? Well, right. the Homestead has been around in a long time, but what they did is they increased it in 2004. That's from you know making people well, aware. What's its, what's its initial date? Oh, I. Jeez, I know the homestead was around when my dad bought in Norwood in 1960. Uh, oh. Of course, he, he didn't put one on either because no one told him about it. But you know, okay. but but All I've right. done research. Yeah. But um, a, as far as um, you know, legislation sometimes uh, uh, you know you have to go up there and lobby for things. Uh, there were changes to the homestead legislation uh, that went into effect March 16, 2011. Mm -hmm. um, for instance, uh, you could if you have a property in trust. The legislature, and you should thank your local legislators, I know Representative Peich is from Wellesley, they made changes that if someone has a property in trust, they can put a homestead on. Mm. Um, they, they made changes. There was um, language in mortgages that mm. terminated your homestead, some people would argue. Oh, uh, you're the, one that No one reads the 30 pages that you sign <laughs> on the mortgage, and there was one sentence. Are that uh, many pages in a mortgage? Yeah, <laughs> well, which is why we probably, some of the books, it's, it's volume, but some of it's because of the length of the what documents. Is the, what is all the language? Uh, well, you know, the, 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 it's, it's, we live like in a this. litigious <laughs> society. But, um, 30 pages the, in a mortgage? But there was only one sentence, uh, there was a one sentence paragraph that terminated your, your, your you, your homestead. Now, what I did, you know, I yeah. I, had, I went to a local community bank. And that's bank, all, somewhere in the bank. back in small small language, right? Well, it, it, <laughs> it's not that small. If you read it, you read it. But a lot of times, people don't really know the effect of these things. Yeah. And I remember saying to, to my bank, hey, you know, uh, you know, because you got kids going to college, you're refinancing all that. I said, hey, you know, if I don't pay, you can foreclose, get that out. And of course, they did it. I just put another homestead on because I didn't want someone 
you know, 20 years from now saying my homestead was terminated. Mm -hmm. Well, thank you, local legislators, because what they did in 2011 was say, look, if that language is in these mortgages, it doesn't terminate your homestead. Again, the effective date of that legislation was March 16, 2011. So mm -hmm. if you did something before, you might want to take a look at that. Mm -hmm. But um, I, I think that, that was a good thing, because what they said is if the banks have that language in, it doesn't terminate your homestead. Yeah. And, and that's a good thing, because, you know... I, I was very lucky. I never had a mortgage in Wellesley. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well... Nor in Brookline. Yeah, <laughs> well, in Brookline, uh, also <laughs> part of Norfolk County, and... Uh, um, but, uh, so sometimes, whether it's the homestead, or in this case, the mortgage assignment bill, you know, you have to make your concerns up to the, to the state representatives and, and the state senators, and uh, we did that. And what we're doing now is uh, it's not a requirement on the 80% side of land, the recorded land side, that you have to record assignments. You do have to record assignments on the land court side. Okay. And what we're finding is that <coughs> um, we believe it's in the interest <coughs> of the consumer, and it sort of uh, makes things transparent to the consumer. You know, when these mortgages get sold, if the assignments were recorded, all the consumer would have to do is look up the internet, because we have it all on the internet, and they could see who's holding their mortgage. Yeah, but this says this is proposed. It's not yet enacted. No, no. It's, uh, it's uh, House Bill 790 and Senate Bill 880. Uh, uh. Uh, about a month ago, I testified in front of the Judiciary Committee. Yeah. And, you know, uh, it may not pass because, you know, some of the, the big banks don't want to record assignments, you know, the, the, the big institutions. Why is that? I, I think it all comes down to money personally, but I don't know. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think their, their arguments necessarily fly to me. Um, uh, people just should, you know, people are paying $175 to record their mortgage. They should at least be able to know who's holding that mortgage. You so the, what the legislation does <coughs> is say, look, at when these mortgages get assigned, the assignments have to be recorded. And that way, people can just look up the computer and see who that mortgage has been uh, assigned to. And but we're thought, only I doing it for residential property. We're not doing it for commercial. It's only for residential. Only for what? It's only for residential mortgages. Residential? Yeah, just okay. residential, because um, we, we, haven't, we haven't been able to get it passed. So uh, we, we do have over 67 sponsors, but it, okay. it, 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 we're slogging away, Richard. Yeah. Uh, the legislative <laughs> process, uh, okay. uh, the legislative process sometimes goes uh, slow. How long has this been in, 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 in the op in ops? This will be the third legislative session, so this will be the fifth and sixth year. So each legislative session is, is a two-year, and this is our third legislative session trying to get it through. In the proposal stage for that long? Well, it, it, the bill has been written. It's just sometimes you've got to get the it, bill through that, a lot of hoops got, to got get it into law. Yeah, yeah, you got to get the it into law. The legislators got to vote on it. No, well, you know, not. in fairness to the legislators <laughs> on this, we've had good support here in Norfolk County. And I got to tell you, they did a nice job. We mentioned electronic recording earlier. Yeah. We have electronic recording in the land court, uh, which is the registered land side of the registry, because the local legislators in, in, in the two-year session, the last two-year session, voted that. So it only took two years to get that bill through that we could uh, do electronic recording on uh, the land court. It, it, it got signed into law by the governor in January. Why it take so long, two years? Gee, I thought I thought we were doing good in two years. It's a well, well you've got to get it through committee. Why is this taking so long? Well, because because there's opposition. Just because I the think bank, it's a good bill, bank, something. Yeah. Are the banks the principal opposers? Uh, are they? Uh, a well, it's a big group. Well, it's, 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 it's uh, one of the bigger. You know, MERS. It's a big, a big outfit. So they're 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 the chief uh, chief opponents. Uh, and I I think sometimes people are afraid to change. My whole thing is look at, you know. Uh, I think it makes everything more transparent, yeah. you know, uh, for the consumer. Yeah. Also, there's a re you know a recording fee. I mean, most of that money would you know is lost opportunity that, that go would go to the, most of the money we collect goes into the state. Mm -hmm. That's not the principal reason for doing it. For me, it's the consumer knowing, because we we see it all the time. Or or when we we people go, hey, mm -hmm. I got to check my mortgage to see if it was discharged, and all of a sudden it was like, well, wait a minute. Did, that group, that's not who I'm paying my mm. thing to. And it's just the assignments were never recorded. Mm. And the reason why I think assignments should be recorded, just say you need to track down your mortgage discharge. No. It would be good 
you know, you'd have that chain. Here was the mortgage, here it got assigned to, okay, now I know who I have to go to to get my mortgage discharge. Mm -hmm. So it takes, it, it, I understand it takes time, uh, but the land court bill, uh, that took two years, but there, there a lot of hearings, a lot of changes, you know, change who does, comes Who's the lobbying on your legislation? Oh, we, basically, it's just the, our, our local, you know, registers of deeds. You, you have, know, you have yeah. to go forward. Yeah, no, we go. It's, I, I view it as part of the job. I view yeah. part of this job is uh, outreach, like we're doing here tonight. Part yeah. of it is um, management, and and part of it is innovation, trying to yeah. use the advances in technology to make that registry operate more. And then I think part of the job is the register is to you know on things like the homestead or some of this legislation is yeah. is, is is to get up yeah. and do it and uh, well, so one of the tw so some of the tools you use in in lobbying the legislature are you want are those secret or? no no <laughs> I, I I think the tool is, is communic communication 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 you you uh -huh. You you know uh, write letters. You go up. You, you have, talk. You, you, you have your you favorite legislators. So you they're all favorite. They're all my favorite. <laughs> they're all my favorite up there. All my no, all the Norfolk <laughs> County legislators are my favorite. <laughs> so you bend their ears. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Oh, oh, oh yeah. <laughs> Give them a cigar oh, too. Bruce, oh Bruce is. Yeah, you said yeah. There's all kinds. Of, there's all kinds of. Uh, yeah. But they're good, and it's. Uh, and legislation, uh, you know, there are a lot of bills, but not all of them become law. So when they do become law, we feel very fortunate. Uh -huh. Yeah, that's the whole idea of democracy. Yeah. Well, yeah, you know. I think. Yeah, I. I, I used to it, think. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, <laughs> yeah, I, I, I think you're right. Yeah. Um, but that that must be fun, though. Uh, well, it's 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 part. You know, it's it's you know it's, it's part challenging of the job. and fun. I can't. Um, my fingers are not working right here. There you go. Oh, okay. Let's say, let's. What about the? What are your current projects now? Well, uh, some what, the some of the project? some of the current projects. Uh, you know, I mentioned that yeah. that 1793. We've finished up that transcription project. Yeah. I mentioned uh, another current project, that index project. Uh, you know, uh, we're back to 1900 on the index. Okay. Well. Uh, I would say by the end of this year, we'll be back to 1793. We have it done. Uh, we just yeah. haven't rolled it out yet because we, we used the transcription project where we were transcribing all those documents to double check the indexes, and, you know, just to make sure they're accurate. Mm -hmm. um, an another project uh, that we're doing, uh, and, and it's more a hobby because of the history, I've been, um, we, we, we've been looking up for notable land records. I mentioned four presidents born in Norfolk right. County, but I was also looking not just for political people, but maybe uh, a businessman, Howard Johnson, you know, born in uh, uh, Quincy, uh, Mr. Rosenberg, founder of Dunkin' Donuts, just different people. Rosenberg, uh, Rosenberg, founder of Dunkin' Donuts. Yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, what's his first name? Um, uh, I, 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 it, uh, it, it, it's you know, no, no, it's not clicking uh, right uh, now. But for instance, um, yeah. Mary Pratt. Mary Pratt, they did that movie, uh, League of Your Own. Yeah. She, you know, uh, again, so I'm trying, we're trying to look up, uh, some of it's historical, some of it is cultural. Mm -hmm. um, Hal Holbrook, one of the actors, was, 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 know was, name, was yeah. li you know, lived in Weymouth. Yeah. Um, and, and trying to tie some of the records, uh, you know, whether it's, uh, we've had Medal of Honor winners, uh, you know, live, lived in Offmore County. So I'm trying to, uh, look, you know, look up like a deed or something, and then have a little biography of what they're what they're about. I mm -hmm. mean, we've had you know governors, uh, um, you know, uh, Governor Dukakis was uh, uh, in Brookline. Uh, Governor Patrick lived in Milton, um, my hometown of Norwood. In the 1920s, there was a Governor Allen. You know, so mm -hmm. um, so just just some history. Uh, 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 Justice Brandeis lived in Dedham. So we're just trying to look, uh, Horace Mann, you know, uh, so yeah, a lot of historical yeah. uh, figures. So that's just kind of a fun project. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, I try to keep the eye on the ball. That's the fun project. The real thing is to make sure the registry's running well. When people bring the documents in to be recorded, they recorded that day. Uh, they recorded efficiently. Mm -hmm. I'm always worried, uh, you know, with the internet, you know, I, 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 you, you do a disaster recovery so that if there's a problem, we can be up and running. You get worried. Uh, we, we do have, uh, and I've had people come in and assess threats and all that. But, you know, you know, as they say, it's mm -hmm. not when someone hacks in. Uh, it's not if someone hacks in, it's when. Mm -hmm. So these are the things you try to keep y your eye on the ball. Um, but 
All the documents have been scanned into the computer. They're available online. All the plans. So all the plans have been recorded. So plans for what? Well, you know, um, just say uh, whether you mentioned Brookline or Wellesley, if there was a piece of land, um, there was a subdivision, the planning board would have to sign off and approve those plans that the developer brought in. Those plans then get recorded at the registry. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, all kinds of documents are recorded at the registry. Uh, a lot of times the consumer likes to look up the plans because it shows the meets and bounds of their property, uh, how much frontage they have, mm -hmm. how deep is their lot, you know, oh, okay. is there an easement uh, recorded over there? Yeah, so yeah. land plans. Um, so when these properties got developed, uh, someone took the time to record the plans. Mm -hmm. So th that's what we've tried to do is to, to you know, it's a, to make sure we, uh, now, is we that have a, a new, good new project. No, that's been ongoing. Uh, the registry, the registers uh, prior to me, uh, you know, were doing that and we're doing it. Uh, what's new about it, uh, I think, is that all of them are now on the internet. You know, before they were all like, you know, the plans were there, mm -hmm. but then we had a, to scan them in. And, and uh, so um, that's been done. And I mentioned the microfilm, my predecessors were microfilm in the, the prior documents. What, uh, what we've uh, worked on is some of the projects that my predecessor started was you got to check your microfilm. Even mm -hmm. though it's stored there, they have this vinegar syndrome, and luckily we don't have that problem where, mm -hmm. you know, they were stored so long, they, they, you know, the microfilm got eaten up. But, uh, <laughs> you know, my pre predecessors were great about checking on those things, and I've tried to continue that tradition. So the microfilm is, uh, is always being uh, examined and reviewed and... Uh, Redone. So you have to keep renewing the thing. Well, you know, uh, it, and yeah. again, a microfilm does help because, um, you know, if something happened, you at least have a, a record you could try to recreate. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, outreach. You've been talking a lot about outreach effort at the air. Uh, you want to say any more about the outreach effort? No, I, I, I appreciate uh, the opportunity to, to come on your show, but... Um, really, if there's a groups out there, we, we go and talk. Sometimes uh, people need a speaker or that, and, and what we try to do is much like what you're trying to do. Um, people say, well, why do I want to listen to the Register of Deeds? But yeah. as I tell people, hey, the biggest asset it has is your, is your home, and there's a lot of things people might not know about, y yeah. and you've touched upon. Yeah. You know, recording a homestead, making sure a homestead's recorded, that protects your home. Yeah. Uh, your mortgages, hey, when you pay them off, yeah, you want to make sure that mortgage discharge tells the world they've been paid off. Yeah. Um, so when we go to, you know, we've, like I said, we've gone to, to veterans groups, we've gone to um, the senior centers, we've gone to the Lions, the Rotaries, there's uh, retired women's clubs, there's retired men's clubs. We, mm -hmm. we sp we've spoken to a variety of groups. Uh, uh, just, just last week we spoke down the street at the Needham Business Association. So um, we try to do the outreach because we do think that even though the registry might be a sleepy arm of government, it, it, it has important information that I, I think is relevant to the consumer mm -hmm. and to the property owner. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see now. Well, we're getting close to the end of your well, end of your document here, well <laughs> and uh, you didn't think we you didn't <laughs> think we'd get there, did no, you? No, no. <laughs> well, I don't know what's in that document, but uh, we'll, we'll keep we'll keep going. Well, you, well, you, you don't know what's in it. Just ask me. <laughs> you, you wrote it, probably. <laughs> uh, how about philanthropic efforts? Oh well, you know of the um, deeds. If you go on our website, www.norfolkdeeds.org, uh, that's, that's a good point. And yeah. yes, some of it is geared to the research and all that. Mm -hmm. But on our website, we try to use it as an information tool. Uh, so first time home buyers can get information. Um, for people, you know, it doesn't matter if you live in Wellesley, uh, Brookline, there, there are affluent communities, mm -hmm. but every community in Norfolk County, someone has struggled uh, with foreclosure. Mm -hmm. And we've partnered up with community, uh, groups, uh, nonprofit community groups, Quincy uh, Community Action Program and Neighbor Works of Southern Massachusetts. And there are links on our website to mm -hmm. them so that if you're struggling with foreclosure, if you get a notice to foreclose, then, you know, take advantage. These groups are, are um, they, they will give you guidance, they'll give you advice. Um, they're not like some of these groups that are charging you, they're nonprofit. Mm -hmm. um, and that's why we linked up with them because they work with people to try to 
Keep them in the house. Name some of these groups that do that. Uh, the Quincy, the two groups that we partnered up with are the Quincy Community Action Program okay. and Neighbor Works of Southern Massachusetts, and they cover every community here in Norfolk County. They've expanded it as part of our partnership. So mm -hmm. if you go on our website and, and you live in a certain community, we have the contact information to those two groups. Mm -hmm. They they do a lot of financial literacy, bringing people in, trying to get people to see their issues. Uh, sometimes they help the people because you know maybe it's just you know a sickness or a, a, a bad luck you know something and they get them through it. Other times this is without charge. Yes. Okay. Yes, and other times they have that hard conversation that, hey, you know you you, you may not be able to, to to stay in the house. You might have to consider transitioning to to, to other uh, shelter, mm -hmm. as far as you know you know get getting some rent money up or things mm -hmm. like that. Um, so. The, the thing we were finding is we have nothing to do with foreclosures other than we see it at the beginning when, when someone is in trouble and notice to foreclose gets recorded at the registry and we see it at the end when a foreclosure deed is recorded. Mm. So we just take the documents, but I thought that would be something it was good to partner up and they reach out to the people that are struggling. So um, if you know somebody or if people are watching this and, and you know, reach out and get the advice and get the help early on in the process. Don't wait till they're at the door, mm -hmm. uh, you know, auctioning your house off. There's, there's a lot of time leading up to that. Take advantage of that and see if you can get the, the help to, to try to get some advice on the situation uh, you're mm -hmm. in. So, um, but as far as other things, you know, we try to be community committed We've partnered up, we've had, we've collected suits, women's suits and, and men's suits, women's clothes, pocketbooks, things you like that at the clothes. registry. It's like Filing's <laughs> Basement. I know I'm dating myself. Down in the plan room, uh, downstairs, it was like Filing's Basement. And what we do, it's been a drop-off point. Hmm. Um, and Where are your drop-off boxes? So, 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 no, we, they drop them to the registry, point. and then what we do is we take them, we, we partnered up with uh, Father Bill's in Mainspring. Uh, they're, they're, uh, what what they do, they work? deal, well, they, they have people that are homeless and, and, and they try to get... Where is this again? Uh, Father Bill's place. It's in Quincy and Mainspring Quincy. and Brockton. What's Mainspring? Uh, is that another town? It's an organization where they, oh, they try to, you know, some people, some of it is people that are homeless and some of it's the working poor where they, they use this information, uh, they, use, they use the uh, suits and, and try to get people on their feet. Sometimes, you know, people are, just need a suit because they're going for an interview. And, and, and so they've done that. Uh, and then um, the, uh, there's a, there's, uh, the Interfaith Social uh, Services in Quincy has a, a career closet mm -hmm. where we, we put a lot of, donate a lot of clothes there. They have, uh, and again, they were the first group that had women's clothing. You know, women who were going for interview that maybe were working poor or, you know, in a tough spot, mm -hmm. they could come in, you know, get some items, you know, uh, so maybe, you know, present a little These better in the items. interview. Um, so, uh, yeah, some of it, yeah, some of it's free. Some of it, they, they yeah, oh, it's, it's Father Bill's free. Other other place, they, they sell it like a, a thrift shop, but the other ones are no. free. And we have recently partnered up uh, with the VA, the veterans uh, down in Jamaica Plain. They start, they take, they have taken a lot of clothes um, for veterans who, who need it you know, mm -hmm. um, all ages, you know, all situations, and we just give it to them and, you know, they take care of it, give it out free. Mm. Um, so that's kind of one, we've had that going for a while and, and uh, it's grown, I'm very proud. Yeah, but you're, you're, you're partners with them, you don't really do. Oh no, we just give them the clothes and they're yeah. the ones that do, they're the one. we just collect the clothes, they do the real, they do the real hard work of dealing with the people and, yeah. and making sure things are done the right way. And uh, a new group we just partnered up with, it's called New Life Home Refurnishings. Um, uh, they have a That's warehouse in Wellesley. That's hard to guess what they do. Yeah. <laughs> well, they have a warehouse in Wellesley. Yeah. I mean, a Wellesley, a Walpole. Okay. And people that use that group have to get referred there by a social agent. You know, over 100 social agencies are partnered up with this group where they, there's a, it's referral based. So, you know, there has to be a referral from a church or, or some of the social agencies mm -hmm. we have in, in here in Massachusetts. What we do at the registry, we collect for them silverware, uh, blankets, um, you know, comforters, uh, towels. 
Uh, they collect. They collect other Home things. Road. If you go, yeah. If you go to their website, they're yeah. located at 102 uh, Elm Street in Walpole. Mm -hmm. um, they they take mattresses, they take furniture, and they refurnish it and fix it up so mm -hmm. that people who are struggling at least can have a bed in the room, mm -hmm. or you know, um, they they retool uh, some of the kitchen tables and things so mm -hmm. people can have furniture. Um, so we can't collect the furniture. What we do is at the registry, we collect the things like the glassware, the software, the cooking ware, uh, things that we can kind of fit in, mm -hmm. in, in downstairs in, in our plan room, mm -hmm. uh, along with the Filene's basement over there. Mm -hmm. um, the big ticket <laughs> items, they can go directly to, to, to New Life Home Refurnishings. Mm -hmm. But what we, we thought it had a nice tie into the real estate. You know, that, that, you know yeah, sometimes people, uh, whether they're renting or owning a home, Sometimes they're struggling, and, and this group does a nice job of, of helping people out. And to me, um, you know, that's a little, uh, it's, a, it's a little newer, and I, but I'm kind of glad we're doing it. It's kind of built on the same foundation of the Suits for Success, so we do the Toys for Tots during the holidays. We've partnered up for, mm. you know, probably, you know, since I've been there with the, the, the Marines to, 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 to do programs like that. So I think it's always good to, to you know, try to do a little out, you know, help people out mm. a little bit, you know, um, mm. and, and so we try to use, because uh, you remember 28 communities use the registry and people come in and a yeah. lot of times people say, hey, I'm going to come back with the various items and they do and we appreciate it. Uh -huh. And you, you say, don't bring them here. Oh, no, 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 bring them to us. No, no, we collect them. It's just we, we will get them to the other places. Oh, we collect the clothes. You don't, uh, we you don't hang on to them, huh? No, we, and, and during the holidays from, uh, you know, Thanksgiving through Christmas, we do a food drive. And, uh, okay. and if you go on our website, we list all the food pantries in Norfolk County uh -huh. um, because uh, they need food all year. So uh, we do a food drive. How are program? The Toys for Tots program, that's with the Marines, and uh, it's been, uh, we, we, we uh, again, um, a lot of it is a function of where we are, because in the building, at the Registry of Deeds building, the grand jury's upstairs, the jurors collect upstairs, so mm -hmm. a lot of people use the building, and we try to use that, and it's great, the, the employees have been great, the people that use the registry have been great, mm -hmm. and uh, the Toys for Tots is, is it's a good thing for the holidays, so the, through the Marines, uh, we collect items that uh, get distributed that during Marine, the Christmas. Uh, Reserve? Yep, the United States yeah. Marine Corps Reserve. Yep. Where are they located? Their article, well, they, w the warehouse they bring is in Quincy. They, they, they use a warehouse that they get the items to. Yeah. Um, but uh, they have other, you know, we've been fortunate to be a, uh, through, through a partnership uh, for probably, like I said, for, you know, probably coming on 15 yeah, years. Well. Uh, we're well, where, a drop-off point, and then they come, yeah. they they uh, they come by with their van, and and uh, they they get it to their main warehouse, and off they go. You say they have a, a main place in, in in Quincy. Yeah, that uh, they were using a warehouse in Quincy. Um, Who all belongs there. to that reserve unit? What what communities? Just oh no, it's 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 the United States Marine Corps. You know, it's oh it's, it's, it's active duty. No, it's it well it's the reserve. It's the the reserves do it. The United States Marine Corps reserves. But oh no, it's they they come in uniform and some of them uh, had just returned from active duty. They come and pick up the uh, the so toys where, and where things. Are, where are their headquarters? Do they have a headquarters? Well, I, I know some of the reserves uh, had done time here in Weymouth. You know, when it was open a, a long time yeah. ago. But there, you know. But they're still, they're still, they they're, they come in uniform, and you know some yeah, of them, are, some of them are young, and some of them are old. But uh, <laughs> they, I, I'll give them credit. I think that's a, a great program that they they've uh, okay, put what's in the place. the tech fund? The tech fund, and again, I got to thank the legislators. The tech fund uh, allows. Um, it, it's a fund that. Uh, came through the state that has allowed us to do some of these modernization initiatives, you know, um, you know whether it's uh, getting uh, scanning equipment, better equipment, uh, doing this projects, is, getting is, the indexing. This is a fund for you, for the need. It, well, it's a fund, it's a fund uh, that gets collected through, through fee, like a, a, a part of that fee that goes into the state, we apply for the tech fund. And it's allowed us to do a lot of the things that we've talked about here, whether it's the transcription project, mm -hmm. um, better equipment. If you come by the registry, we have over 50 computers sprinkled around the registry building. So that's not just for the lawyers or the title examiners. Anyone can, can use them mm -hmm. uh, the, to use those computers to do research. Uh, 
uh, and so uh, it's allowed us to, to, to do so a lot of these things. Some of the stuff you're doing is not built into your annual budget. It's, it comes through other sources, is that right? Yeah, the, in the tech fund, the tech fund is, yeah. was, was very helpful. Yeah, what are the improvements to the registry building? Oh, well, uh, uh, that's mostly through, th that's through the, the, the budget. You know, um, one thing I think it probably happens in all towns is, you know, um, sometimes people just in, in households just try to make ends meet and the capital projects that need to get done probably get pushed off. Mm -hmm. So some of the things we've done recently, um, in 2015, everyone remembers those big snowstorms and everything, you know, the, the building leaked and everything. Well, new roof had to be put on. Mm -hmm. uh, the building, um, our building is a, a, a nice building. It was, it was built in 1903. Oh. So uh, <laughs> we, we just redid. We, That's they, a serious they, building. Yeah, they did, and it's a beautiful looking building. And brick uh, or wood? Uh, oh, it's masonry. masonry. It, it, and so we just had. They just did a building envelope issue, filling it in, and and and, and you know cleaning it up. Mm -hmm. um, uh, you know things that sometimes people take for granted. Uh, actually, the building in 1903, the first time it was open, it had an elevator. It was the first elevator in Dedham, and at times I thought it was still <laughs> the first elevator in Dedham. How we, big we, is we put in a um, how, how tall is it? Well, uh, let's say about, it's three stories from three, the basement. It, it doesn't look three stories because it's kind of dug oh, into okay. the ground there. Um, and and the, the registry of deeds, we have the first floor uh, and part of the second floor. Okay. I mean, part of the basement. That's where we have the, you know, uh, we, we have the places where they do the closings. We have mm -hmm. tables. I have to thank the historical societies and commissions because, you, you know, you try to dress the place up. We asked everyone to, to, to send us a picture. Uh, you know, that they thought would, would be depict their town. Brookline sent a beautiful picture of Beacon Street. Mm -hmm. um, you, you know, uh, and I got to thank the, th the Historical Societies and Commissions because they, they did send stuff. Wellesley sent a beautiful picture. You got a beautiful town hall. And what, what we did was blow up the pictures and put them around that, that basement so when people come in, at least it, it looks a little, ba uh, mm -hmm. a little better. Uh, a lot of times people just want to close. They want their, their, their money to exchange hands and mm -hmm. their keys to exchange hands and the movers can move. Um, but again, we try to run it like a business. When I got there, um, and part of it was the probate court was down there and they moved. So I said, hey, we could use the space because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you know, when you try to run it like a business. <laughs> if people are going to come to close, you want to have some space for them. You just took over the building. I <laughs> took over the uh, part of it. I, I, you got upstairs two, still you, has. <laughs> you got two thirds of the building. Uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Better I, you than know. that, if you count the basement. <laughs> yeah, you, you got most of the yeah, building. Well, yes, yeah, some people might say that, yeah. but uh, all, all oh. spa space well uh, accounted for. Okay. <laughs> I hope. Okay. Uh, what, what is this business about uh, your efforts to uh, pass the land court legislation? Well, that we, we had talked about. Uh, the land court legislation. Um, we talked about yeah, that, th that okay. allowed us to do electronic recording. That, oh, okay. that just That's, passed. Yeah. It got signed into law in January. Yeah. And the good news is um, because um, uh, uh, I'm still storing the original. By law, we have to store the original documents on the land court side, and we still do. But that legislation, uh, in, in having it rewritten, allowed us to do electronic recording before uh, we couldn't. So okay. that was, that was, a, that was a, a, a big piece of uh, well, Bill. Things. We've covered all 95 pages of this document. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, uh, well you know, we didn't uh, cover all, but we covered a lot of it. And you provided an awful lot of information. Anything else you want to add to what our, our discussion on this No, uh, whole well, business? just, uh, you know, I, I, I guess if I did forget anything, you can go on to our website because uh, we, we tried to, you know, make it well, uh, I got I got to I got to have sort of what you already said. I can't go look to other stuff. Yeah, you in I, you, mess up my thinking. <laughs> yeah, you could do you, some people do research. Well, what is your website? It, the website uh, again it's the Norfolk County Registry of Deeds. We're located at 649 High Street in Denham. The website is www.norfolkdeeds.org. If you need to send me an email, it's register What's O'Donnell uh, at uh, www deeds, uh, dot org. What's the phone number, uh, customer service phone number is 781-461-6101. 6101. Yeah. All right. Well, this is good. Well, it, it, this it, is it, good it's stuff. been enjoyable. Uh, and, you uh -huh. know, uh, there's 28 communities, uh, but... Uh, my theme always has been, uh, and people out there who are watching, you know, your house is 
probably your biggest asset. So uh, the registry, that's what we deal with. So it's uh, very interesting, it but uh, so many people think their car is the best asset. <laughs> 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 well, <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> I was never uh, a big car person, but you're probably right. <laughs> okay. Well, I want to thank you, and uh, I'm, I'm pleased that you had the time that you could come sit with me for, I guess it's been a good part of an hour. Oh, wow. Yeah, well, time went by. Well, Richard, thank you very much for well, having me, you. and I hope the information, uh, you know, people found it interesting, yeah, but I, 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 think it, I think it's... If it's not, it's at least worthwhile, you know, for yeah. people, hopefully. But thanks, thanks for uh, making this all That's happen. That's what this is all about, yeah. I think. Yeah, yeah. Definitely. definitely. Well, I want to thank my l l viewing audience and thank uh, William O'Donnell, Register of Deeds for North Fork County, and uh, thank my, my good people out here in the studio who are working hard to make my programs successful and uh, interesting. And with that, I will say to you, as Richard S. McGee, good night.